the, oh wow, that's big. Tattoo the Basset Hound. Heard the name before? Maybe you saw it online. Um, one day, Tattoo's owner went to leave the house, and the dog thought, well, I'm, I'm going too, and had leash on and, and already and, and headed out the door, but the owner didn't realize that, I guess, that Tattoo was trying to go along with him and jumped up into the car and started to go, and the dog had gotten up, and the collar got into the car, but not the dog. And he closed the door and started going. Police officer, uh, his name was uh, Officer Filbert, said that they were going down the road about 25 miles an hour. And by the way, the Basset Hound, yeah. He said the Basset Hound, this is the quote. The officer said the Basset Hound was picking them up and putting them down as fast as he could. Um, they stopped him. The officer stopped. The dog was fine. Uh, but asked not to go out on a walk for a really long time. And uh, actually, the dog is fine. But here's the, here's the question. Are you, do you feel like you're picking them up and putting them down as fast as you possibly can? And uh, somehow or another, it's just not quite working. Uh, do you have a problem slowing down? Resting? Unplugging? Uh, July 4th, uh, just a couple weeks ago, right? I was looking forward to the July 4th weekend. I thought, this is my chance. And, you know, the weekend kind of got crazy. And I thought, well, that's all right, because on July 4th, so Monday, I'm thinking tomorrow, tomorrow's my day. I am going to rest on July 4th, because I know nobody's going to be doing anything. And I can rest. And so I got up, I got up. 6.30, I was up. I had my coffee made. I sat down with my coffee, and I turned the TV on. I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit here and enjoy my coffee and watch the news and just relax. It's my day off. It's, it's July 4th. I, I sat there for about five minutes watching the news and sipping my coffee, and I'm thinking, I should be doing something. I just should be doing something. I don't, and I, I tried to, no, 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 this is July 4th. And nobody's up in my house. I'm the only one up. I'm drinking my coffee. I, I get halfway through the cup, and I just, I, I really should be doing something. I finally gave up, and I said, you know what? If I'm going to feel like that, I'm just going to go to the gym. And so I got up, swigged, last my coffee, went to the gym. I thought, that's about as good as it's going to get. So uh, I just, you have a, you know, even when you have a chance to stop, you feel guilty? Feel like you should be doing something? We don't really know how to rest. Not very well. I, I, this morning, for this morning's message, I'd like to have you turn to a text that says, Jesus was in a hurry and so he ran to the next town. But uh, there isn't a text like that. Jesus was never in a hurry. Have you got your Bibles? Uh, I titled Inside Your Bulletin is an outline called Unplugging. Unplugging. And I, what I've done is we're going to look at the two passages, uh, Exodus chapter 16 and Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 16 is really the first reference to what we call, or what was called, the Sabbath. Sabbath instruction. Uh, Exodus 31 is kind of a, a follow-up to that in what happened. And so we're going to look at those two passages just as a jumping point this morning as we talk about unplugging and our ability to do that and why we need to. Um, I got a, a little article, just a, a quote here. Harvard Weekly uh, had this in print just not too long ago. It said, for many, 72 hours is the new norm. In a recent survey of 483 executives, managers, and professionals, we found that 60% of those who carry smartphones for work are connected to their jobs 13.5 or more hours a day on weekdays and about five hours on weekends for a total of 72 hours. So that's the new norm, 72 hours. All right, here's what I said in your outline, and here's your passage. Do you have uh, Exodus chapter 
16, and, and I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to start in verse 21 when we get there because I, it's, it's a long story. So we're going to pick up here in, in verse 21. So what the story is, and we're going to get to it in a minute, but the story is, you know, they're wandering through the wilderness, right? Okay. Verse 21. Each morning, everyone gathered as much as he needed, and when the sun grew hot, it melted away. I got to go back. Sorry. Go back to verse 16. I, there's so much. I, I, I was going to read you the thing, but we really have to tell the story. Um, let me, okay, let me do it this way. They've already they've been in Egypt, right? 400 plus years, slavery, right? Comes time for, Moses comes in and they, they, they exit. They, they leave Egypt and God parts, you know, the, the plagues and God parts the, the Red Sea and they walk through the Red Sea and they get on the other side and the first thing they say is, we're hungry, we're thirsty. And they start grumbling. And so God provides them that magic food called manna, right? Every morning manna, every evening quail. So they get their carbs and their proteins, right? And so that's how they go through the wilderness. So the instruction is, and where we're, where we're picking up here, is God telling them every morning you're going to go out and you're going you're gonna to collect the manna, all right? So here's where the story picks up. Verse Verse 16, this is what the Lord has commanded. Each one is to gather as much as he needs. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, he who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little did not have too little. Each one gathered as much as he needed. So this was a daily thing, right? Then Moses said to them, no one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry at them. Each morning, everyone gathered as much as he needed, and when the sun grew hot, it melted away. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much, two omers for each person, and the leaders of the community came and reported this to Moses. He said to them, this is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever's left and keep it until morning. So they saved it until morning as Moses commanded and it did not stink or get maggots in it. Eat it today, Moses said, because today is the Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. All right, so there's, your, there's your, your context for the story. Here's what I said in your outline. When I don't unplug, I feel empty. Empty is the blank. Here's why. As we've, we've read the story, they, they get the instruction and they tell them every day they're supposed to go out and collect just for enough for that day. They don't keep it. It's a daily thing that they do every day, every evening. But then on Friday, they were supposed to collect two portions for Friday and for Saturday, the Sabbath, right? Because on Saturday morning, there isn't going to be any manna on the ground and the quail aren't going to land. So because the Sabbath is the day that I want you to stop and to rest. That's the day, and we'll get to this in a moment, but that's the Sabbath, so I'm not going to give you all that stuff. So what ends up happening is there's a group of them that decide, well, you know, it's not really that big of a deal, is it? I mean, he's been providing manna every morning and quail every night. Surely he doesn't care. And so they didn't collect the two portions on Friday. And they get up and they go out in the morning thinking they're going to collect like every other day. And they go out into the open and there's nothing. It's empty. There's no manna. And, and they get to the evening and there's no quail. It's empty. What you, uh, what they came to expect and what they thought was going to meet their needs, didn't. They were left with nothing. Empty hands. Everybody else had jars full of manna, right? Everybody else had quail in the pot, but not them. That group of people decided that they would do things their own way, and that it didn't really matter, and God surely wouldn't care, and 
they ended up with empty hands, empty plates, empty stomachs. When you choose not to unplug and follow and do what God has called you to do, what you think is going to fulfill your life and be full ends up being empty. You end up with nothing. Uh, anybody, we've had some people here in the church that uh, do some long distance exercise. Maybe you, you, we've got some marathoners that did it. We've got, maybe you ride bikes and long rides or anything. Anytime you do an exercise that is uh, three hours, four hours, five, six hours long, uh, long rides, marathons, those kinds of things. Uh, they have this thing that they call bonking. Anybody here know what I mean when I say bonking? Really? Then you haven't done it. If you did it, you would know it. Uh, we, when we went on a long, I've done bike rides down to Yuma, and uh, it, it, it takes two and a half days when you're slow. <laughs> if you're really good, you can just ride it, but I'm not that good. And so we, we, we've gone down in a couple days. And when we came from California, it was a five-day ride. And uh, you're riding six, seven, eight hours a day. And here's what you do. You get on the bike and you think, man, you get up in the morning, you're excited, you get on your bike and you're riding along and, and you're not really, you're feeling great. 30 minutes, 30 minutes into it, you think, they go, you want to keep going? Yeah, 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 let's keep going. And you suck a little water and you keep going. An hour, hour and a half. You know, if we go a little bit farther, we can make it to here and let's just, let's just keep going. Okay, okay, okay. And you maybe you get a little bit, and you keep going. And what happens is after, you know, you're all right for a couple hours. You can do that for a couple hours. And all of a sudden, you bonk. And sometimes, it's usually around five or six hours on biking. About five or six hours. All of a sudden, if you have not been taking in food, if you've not been taking in nutrition, if you've not been drinking, if you've not been getting your electrolytes, you've not been getting your protein, not been getting your carbs, if, you don't, if you've not been taking it in, all of a sudden, you, what they used to, some people say, they hit the wall. And you just got nothing. Nothing. You crash. You're done. When you do not unplug and stop and rest and refuel and refocus, you will come to the end. Uh, God's instruction for the Sabbath was for them to stop and to refocus on him. And when we get to the point where we think, well, God really won't care if I ignore him. God really won't care if I ignore his instructions. And he won't mind if I do my own thing and pursue my own dreams and live my own life apart from him. God really won't care. It's not really that important. You're going to find out that you come to the end of that empty. Done. What we thought was going to meet our needs is just going to end up disappearing. We're going to go to where we think we've always found what we wanted, and we end up with empty hands. All of our plans, our dreams come to an end and leave us with empty hands. Uh, you find yourself going, 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 going to achieve maybe it's a dream. Uh, a family, a job, a vacation, a promotion, a house. Uh, you're filling your portfolio investments, and, and you're going, 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 going in your pursuit, which we do. But in the busyness of it all, I don't really have time for God. It's busy. Don't really have time to talk to God or listen to God or worship God or, or connect with other Christians or serve with other people. You just, just not enough time. I just don't have enough time in my day. I don't have enough time in my week. I'm just, I'm just, I'm doing the 72 hour plan. Doing that? Uh, when we don't unplug on a regular basis because we're pursuing our own dreams and visions and plans, we end up bonking and burning out. Sometimes we'll achieve our goals, but you get to the end of the goal and you feel empty. 
even when you have it in your hand. Uh, you, maybe you've, you've seen the things after the Super Bowls, after the World Series, after, sometimes, they don't usually publish those interviews, you usually have to get those later. Where guys will say, you know, two or three days later after I won everything, I just kind of went, is that it? Is that all there is? Because I just spent my whole life thinking that was what I wanted. And I got it, and it makes me still feel empty. Unplugging leaves you empty. Also leaves you hungry, right? No manna in the morning. Oh, well, maybe it'll drop a little later. No. Well, we'll get, we'll get quail tonight, right? I mean, God will... You know, I know I made a mistake, but God will probably give me some quail tonight, right? He'll drop them in. Maybe a couple birds. No. They were hungry. I'm not about you, but when I get hungry, I can't think. I have to stop. I, I, people, my friends know, when I'm hungry, we're done. I'm going to go eat now. Because I get hungry. And I can't really focus if I'm hungry. Uh, they're Hungry, they're empty, their stomachs are empty, empty, and they are hungry. I don't think they made the same mistake next Friday. I think the next Friday, they collected two portions and didn't do it again. Refusing to unplug and listen to God, to stop, to rest, to refuel, to, to refocus, when you refuse to do that, it leaves you feeling empty without the most important things in your life and hungry. Because you're not satisfied. You're always wanting more from life. Pursuing a life without God, without time for God, will leave you hungry without satisfaction. It's a, a never-ending pursuit that leaves you without fulfillment. No matter what you try, it's not enough. There's, there's always something more that you think you want. You're hungry for more. More money, more freedom, more time, more relationships, more trips, more entertainment, more stuff. But there's always an emptiness and a hunger for more. Until we learn how to stop, how to unplug, how to rest and refuel and refocus our hearts and our minds on God, we will continue to wander unsatisfied, empty, and hungry for something more. You know that that's what the Sabbath was for, right? We're, we're going to look at the next section, but that's what the Sabbath was meant to do. The Sabbath was meant for you and for me, for, for, for the people of Israel to stop from everything that they'd been doing so that they would focus on God and be reminded. And that's where we're going to, that's our next point, all right? So, not, so when I don't unplug, I feel empty and hungry. When I do, when I unplug, I remember, and here are three things I'm going to give you. When I unplug, I remember who God is, number one. Turn to Exodus uh, chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31. Verses 13 and 14. And really the focus is 13, but, but, but here's the instruction. Say to the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come, so that you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it must be put to death. Whoever does any work on that day must be cut off from his people. It was pretty serious. The Sabbath instruction for the people of Israel, for the nation of Israel in this time, it was serious. Because here's why. It says, when I unplug, I remember who God is. The purpose of the Old Testament Sabbaths was to remind God's people of who God was. The Sabbath was a, what does he say? A sign. The purpose of the Sabbath was because it acted as a sign, a reminder, a picture, an illustration. Every time they had a Sabbath, it was a hands-on, interactive, weekly spiritual activity. How do you like that one? I made that one up. A hands-on, interactive, weekly spiritual activity. It was called resting and taking time with God. 
It was designed to reconnect you, to remind you of who God is. It brought the reality of God back front and center so that they would not forget generation to generation. If you don't do this, he said, you won't remember who I am. I am the Lord who did all of these things for you. Uh, do, do you have traditions or celebrations that are designed to help you remember things? Maybe, maybe simple, maybe birthdays, you know. It's your birthday and you have a big party and celebration. Uh, anniversaries, you should probably do those. I'm just saying. Um, we um, had last night, and I know I, I've mentioned this several times just because it's a real part of what's going on in my life right now. Last night, we had my oldest sons, they had their two little foster boys, their adoption party last night. So um, all of the, uh, we had a big party. It was over in the middle of the storm that blew through. We actually had it in, a ch in the church, in their home church, and had two big, they had in their open area, had two big bouncies for the little kids because it was a little kid party. Had two, two kids and all the perfect kid foods, cheese balls, uh, popcorn, you know, all the, all the junk food you can possibly imagine, and uh, just had a great time uh, in the adoption party. It was, it was a big celebration. It was something to, and we marked the date, right? Uh, on Monday is the court date when the adoption actually is finalized. We go in on Monday. My adoption gift to the boys, I uh, put a, a, a repeating monthly college draft every month on the date that they were adopted. Money will go into their college fund every month on, the, on that date to remind them that they have been given a gift adopted by God, adopted by their mom and dad, brought into our family. It is a celebration. Do you have things that you do that remind you of important things, that remind you of God? Uh, we don't actually celebrate the Old Testament Sabbath. And you, I mean, you know this is not the Sabbath, right? This is the first day of the week. This is Sunday, the day of the resurrection, which is why we do it, right? We remember what Jesus Christ has done for us. Jesus created an ongoing Sabbath rest. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ Fulfilled all of that, all of the requirements of the law, giving us a ongoing Sabbath rest with God. Every day is holy to the Lord. Not just one. Every day. When you belong to Jesus. But we still benefit from unplugging, stopping, resting rejuvenating, refocusing, refocusing on who God is. And that second blank there, not only are we refocusing on who God is, but it's also on what God has done. Because in the text, what he's saying is, you must observe the Sabbath, this will be a sign between me and you for generations to come, so that you may know that I am the Lord. Well, what were they remembering? Well, they had been what? Rescued, right? This is the people who just came out of Egypt. We're, we're fresh off of 400 plus years. Parting the Red Sea. Delivering them from all of their enemies. Giving them food every day. Water. The promised land. That's remembering what God had done for them. That's what they were supposed to be doing on the Sabbath. Remembering who he was and what he'd done. We, we talked about this a little bit last week, about the importance of uh, that we unplug long enough to remind the next generation of who God is and what he's done. It's, it's keeping the stories of God alive in our lives, 
it's important for us to be able to pass that down from generation to generation. Making uh, God real in the lives, in, in our lives, is critical to being able to pass it down from generation to generation. Blessing, the blessing of God from generation to generation. If our children and grandchildren don't see a living Jesus in us, I'm going to say that again. If your children and grandchildren don't see a living Jesus in you, they will not see any reason to make him a part of their lives. They have to hear the stories of Jesus. They have to hear the stories of how God intervened in your life. In your life. They need to hear those stories. That's why you get together and tell the stories. Aside from picking at your siblings, you get together to tell the stories of God so that your children hear what God has done for you. It becomes a, a living thing then. They remember, oh, that's what God did? Yeah, that's what God did in my life. It changed my life. When they can connect what God has done in your life with what he can do in their lives, then they will choose to know the God who transforms and intervenes in their life. So yesterday, Saturday, no, sorry, Friday. So we, I was gone this week up at youth camp, uh, up there with my family, and, and my wife is a part of that staff that leads up there, and... Uh, my son, my second son, Cameron, he did worship here for a few times, a couple, couple years ago, <laughs> came up and did some worship. And uh, my second son on Friday got engaged uh, to his uh, girlfriend, and he planned it, okay? He calls me on Tuesday, because we've been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it and trying to get it all worked out, trying to get the, well, it's going to be the week before, and there's going to be this time, there's going to be that time. And finally, calls me on Tuesday and says, okay. We're going to do it on Friday and up in Flagstaff, which is where we were for camp. She's already up there for her thing. I'm going to come up. And he had a whole thing planned out, had pictures and sneaky stuff and all this kind of stuff. He was going to surprise her, you know. He had the whole thing all worked out. And, and so I go, okay, because he, he wanted to have an uh, engagement party Friday night. We're not home, right? We're in Flagstaff. I tell him, you've got to tell me this because we have to get this thing together. So we go down, we come down on Friday, we get in the home, and we spend four hours putting this party together. And families on both sides are coming together for the big party. And then they all, and they got the pictures because we had a photographer that took the pictures and sent them down. And what they want to hear, tell us how you did it. And so he's telling the whole story. And in the middle of that, my youngest daughter looks over. Now you understand, in a room of, there's 25 of us because this is her side. She's the first one to get engaged in their extended family of everywhere. Hey, Dad, this is my youngest. Um, what's the story of when you proposed to Mom? She'd never heard it. Tell me, how did you do that with Mom? I'm in front of 25 people who had never, and I said, well, honey, I said, Will you marry me? I said, this is before the days of Pinterest. I'm sorry. This is back before we knew we were supposed to be creative. Because I am not, I'm, I am not all that creative. And, uh, but you, you, you get to, the purpose of the Sabbath was to get together to remember who God was, and what God has done. And to tell the story, because they won't remember. If you do not tell the stories of God, and how God has changed your life, and what God has done in your life, and that makes God, I hate to say it this way, come alive in your life. If you, if you cannot communicate that to the people around you, they don't remember. They don't see any value. They forget. And so... That was the point. We unplug, we remember, we tell the story, 
it, the stories are, are endless. Where do you want me to start? How far back do you want me to go? Of all of the things that God has done in my life, it just keeps going. It, it's, it's too easy, and, and here's what happens. When we don't regularly unplug and remember, we get into a pattern where we think, well, you know, we, we move along through life, we're living as if all of the things in our lives are somehow just magically connected to me and clean living. I'm just a good person. And I've made all the right choices. No. All the good stuff in your life is not just because you've been clean living and made good choices. It's the blessing of God. You need to tell it. You need to be reminded of it. Your children and your grandchildren need to be reminded of it. That this is the blessing of God. This is grace upon grace. This is his undeserved blessing in your life. So when we unplug, we remember who God is, remember what he's done. And the third one is we, uh, we remember who I, I remember who I need to be. What does he say? So I am the Lord who makes you holy. Holy. God is the one who makes me holy, set apart for him and for his purposes. And yet, you've, you've got, here's a reference. I'm going to give you a couple of references you can kind of write in your notes here. 1 Peter 1.16, you've heard this one. 1 Peter 1.16 says, be holy because I am holy. He calls us to be set apart, to, to live our lives for him. That's what that means. Holy means to be set apart. For God, to be holy is to be set apart, to, 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 to dedicate, to give our lives to God and say, I will follow you and your purposes, to live my life in such a way that it honors you and points other people to Jesus. When I unplug, when I stop, when I rest, when I refuel, when I refocus, I'm better able to remember who I need to be. Worship takes time. Worship takes time. And, and I don't mean just public worship. Public worship? I mean private worship. It takes time to be holy. Isn't there a song like that? Yeah, old hymn. Take time to be holy. Yeah, take time to be holy. It takes time to be set apart. We, uh, we want everything fast. Fast food, fast lanes, fast cars, fast teeth whitener, fast weight loss or fast weight gain. We want fast education degrees. We want fast worship. Is your phone dinging you right now? Ding, 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 ding. Things you got to do, people you got to meet for lunch, you got plans. How difficult is it to stop to encounter Jesus, to encounter God, to encounter the Holy Spirit? How difficult is that? It takes time. But you need to do it, I need to do it, so that I can remember what God has done and who, who God is and who I need to be. Let me give you a couple of verses, leave you with this. Because I want to remind you that unplugging is not just an Old Testament concept, okay? I, I know we, we took this from the Sabbath explanation, but it's not just an Old Testament uh, idea. Mark chapter 6, verse 31 says, then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, and this is Jesus, to his disciples, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. That's Jesus telling his disciples, 
were going, 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 going. And if you follow the story, by the way, they were going, 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 going. He said, it's time to rest. It's time to come away. It's time to stop. It's time to, to refuel. It's time to refocus. Come away with me. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. When we unplug, we focus on God and we refill our heart and our mind and our soul. Psalm 46.10, another Old Testament. God says, be still. And know that I am God. Same phrase, right? That he just said to them in the Sabbath. I did this to remind you that I am God. That's why you do it. When we put ourselves in the position to hear the voice of God and remove all of the distraction and noise of life, we'll be able to hear the still, small voice of God. Remember the story of Elijah? 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah's running from Jezebel who wants to kill him. He gets into the cave and he's, he's distraught. He's overdone. He's bonked. Bet nobody ever said that about Elijah. He's bonked. He did. God, just kill me. Right? He was done. And then he hears the, the wind, the tornado. And he goes out to the edge of the cave, and it's just a tornado. Then he hears the earthquake. And he goes out, and it's just an earthquake. He goes out, and it's a fire. It's a, it's a, and, and it's just a fire. And then he hears the what? Remember? Whisper. Just a whisper. And it was God. How hard is it for you to hear God? To stop long enough to let, to, to get rid of all of the stuff on a regular basis so that you can refocus your lives on God. Have you been uh, picking them up and putting them down as fast as you can? But you just keep feeling a little bit beat up and worn out. It's time to unplug. Stop, rest, refuel, refocus on God. Um, maybe, maybe for you, maybe you've been caught in a, uh, what I would call a works-based religious idea, which is the faster I run, the more God approves. It's a works-based religious system. A lot of people do it. The harder I run, the faster I run, the harder I work, the more God loves me. And so I just keep running, 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 going, 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 thinking that somehow God's going to look at me and say, you know what? Your time's getting pretty good. You're doing all right. I'm tired because it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Your relationship with God is not based on work, not based on how fast you can run, it is by God's grace through our faith in Jesus Christ that he forgives us, cleanses us, and gives us eternal life. How about you? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning and for an opportunity to be reminded that you've called us to, to unplug 
to stop and to rest and to refocus, to refuel, to refocus on you and to allow you, Father, to be the, the, the most important thing, to remind us of, of who you are and what you've done and who you've called us to be. God, help us not to lose sight of that so that we can live our lives with full hearts and full hands and full lives. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Would you stand with me?